Hi there, welcome. My name is Kevin Martin. I am the Academy Director for Strike FC. Uh, I hope you came across this uh, short video just in an effort to learn a little bit more about what the Strike FC Academy has to offer for your son or daughter um, and to kind of figure out if it's the right fit for you, depending upon if you're looking to switch from a recreational program to something a little more challenging within the Academy, or maybe you're looking to move from one um, club to another just to, because it's a little bit uh, easier fit for your family. So I'm here to try to answer some of those questions that you might have, but uh, as always, uh, I am able to be reached uh, other ways via email or uh, a text or phone call, and I'm happy to address any of those questions that you might have that aren't addressed here uh, today. A little bit more about myself. Uh, this is my second year as the Academy Director for Strike FC. I have been uh, coaching for the last 20 years at the rec level, the academy level, the select level, as well as the high school boys and girls level, um, freshmen as, all the way through um, varsity head coach. Uh, I absolutely have an absolute passion for coaching, but first I am a husband and a father of three wonderful children. Uh, one of those children is uh, going to be a U12 player within the Strike FC Select program next year. And, um, you know, you'll notice when I do things within the academy, I am kind of a, a father figure. I, I, I try to be approachable to the kids. I uh, try to be a friend to the kids, um, try to make sure that they feel comfortable with uh, our coaching staff and myself there. Uh, but, uh, you know, secondarily, I'm, I'm a coach and I am trying to help develop these players and make them better, uh, get them ready for the select program, so on and so forth. So let me tell you a little bit more about our program. Uh, when it comes to our uh, actual academy, what is our basic mission? Uh, we are a player development program over winning. Uh, we try to have those uh, players learn the game through something we call the play practice play model. I will talk a little bit more about that coming up in a, in a future slide. We try to grow leaders even at a young age. Um, and we want that leadership to grow. So we try to model that both through our staff, but also through the activities that we do uh, on the field so that they can be leaders on the field, but also off the field. Uh, we do aim to prepare them for technical abilities uh, so that they can move through our academy program uh, and future on into our select program. Uh, but we also start to teach some basic tactics. Uh, we play uh, 4v4 and then as much as 7v7 games and we use uh, the strategies that uh, our staff have been trained in to pass that on to our players so that they know what to expect as they move forward into our select program. We also uh, do have part of our mission an evaluation of our players that happens mid-season and uh, we also look to uh, evaluate our staff uh, throughout the season, uh, mid-season as well as after the season to help them continue to grow. Uh, in their leadership abilities and the things that they can offer to your son or daughter. When it comes to the basic age structure of uh, the academy, I get a lot of questions a lot of times, you know, how, how does the academy work? When can we start? When does it end? So on and so forth. So we have basically a U7, U8 boys and girls program. Uh, we try to keep those separated into two different gender groups. But uh, depending upon numbers, we have uh, in some years had to mix genders at the U7, U8 level. Uh, birth years for those groups are 2013 and 2014. And games at those levels are played on 4v4, very small fields, small goals, and there are no keepers in those games. Uh, starting in the 2021 season, we are going to return um, at the academy level to one field of 4v4 with six to eight players per, per team on the roster. Uh, and the goal is to maximize the amount of play that they have on the field and not have them sitting out very much at all. Uh, we would like to keep small rosters so that they play at least half a game, but if we can have rosters of six, that would ensure that you know two players are, are resting, but everybody else is playing and they're in and out every couple of minutes. At the U9-10 level, um, for the boys and the girls, those are birth years of 2011 and 2012. 
Uh, those games are moved up to a little bit larger field. We play seven against seven with six field players and one uh, goalkeeper. So we start to introduce goalkeeping uh, techniques. We do have goalkeeper coaches within the club that our players can start to work with uh, within the academy. Uh, and with those rosters, we try to limit it to about 10 players per team. Uh, we have had rosters go a little bit higher when needed or when we uh, have room. Uh, but again, we try to make it so that there are not too many players sitting out at any given time. We do know that um, players sometimes have conflicts with their schedules. Uh, so we will um, have to have a, a couple of subs and we want to make sure that players are available and ready uh, to go uh, when it comes to game day. So we, uh, we, we monitor that closely and uh, we'll try to make sure that we have a full roster every, every game that we have. Do want to point out that the uh, Strike FC Academy is an accredited academy within the Wisconsin Youth Soccer Association, or WISA. Uh, which means that every two years we do have somebody from uh, WISA come out, check out our program, make sure that we uh, have the proper training facilities. Our coaching staff is well equipped to meet the needs of your uh, son or daughter uh, and that we are uh, kind of abiding by the rules and regulations set forth by the Wisconsin Youth Soccer Association. Uh, there are a number of clubs uh, within the state that uh, fall into this academy program and uh, Strike FC is proud to be one of those. We just uh, got a kind of a glowing review this past fall uh, with all the things that we are doing there. Very pleased with uh, our efforts, and uh, we are we are pleased to keep moving forward um, and and making our our academy even better. Uh, I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about our basic training sessions. You know, what can you expect when you uh, come into the Strike FC Academy? How is it different from maybe a, a recreational program? Uh, we do follow what's called the play practice play model, and we use that model within something we call pool training. So players will train together with similar age group players. Our um, basic schedule is here for next fall. U7, U8 boys and girls will train on Mondays and Wednesdays from 5.15 to 6.30 p.m. And that will be at Nagawaki Soccer Park um, in Delafield. We are U9, U10 boys will train uh, together on uh, Mondays and Wednesdays from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, we have sometimes enough boys to uh, train the U9s all together and the U10s all together uh, in their own separate pools. Uh, and then the U9, U10 girls are Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5.30 to 7 p.m., uh, also out at Nagawaki Soccer Park. Um, we will also with them try to pool them as U9s and U10s if possible. Uh, depending upon how many girls we have in the program any given year, we may um, pool practice them uh, together. Uh, but we also know that with pool training, you do need to sometimes work with a particular age group or a particular team. Um, so my example there, um, the U9 boys may start together for the first play phase of a session. Then they'll split into specific teams with their specific coaching to work on a, a topic of the day. And then they might come back together and play against uh, another U9 team within our program to end the training session, kind of in a scrimmage model uh, where the coaches try to stay actively involved, and, but still let the kids play. So that goes with our play practice play model uh, a little bit more. Uh, this is a suggested model and a, um, a model that is taught through educational programs to coaching staff around the state of Wisconsin, uh, where we start with open play. The goal is to get kids uh, playing right away. This might be a small sided game or activity that is even running before practice technically starts so that as kids arrive, they hopefully are out being active right away not off causing trouble, but this is why kids just love to, to come to training sessions. Uh, I was very impressed the first time that we started doing this as kids were eager to get to training sessions. They were eager to get out and play. Um, it's what they want to do, right? Play the game. Uh, we then, after doing that for about 15 minutes, we'll head into a practice session where we have a curriculum that uh, is led out by our licensed coaching staff. Each training session will focus on a particular topic of that day. Uh, I put together a curriculum uh, that allows our staff to uh, adjust the needs of their particular team, but maybe uh, the topic for the day is defending near the goal. 
the activities uh, that we will um, teach that day then all have that um, main topic in mind. And then throughout the entire fall season, we try to piece all those things together so that they have um, a good solid foundation of our curriculum at the end of a, a particular fall season and then going into the spring season. The training session will then end typically with some time dedicated to uh, a small game where we play either 4v4 or 7v7, focusing on that particular topic of the day, like defending near the goal. And the coaches during those sessions are encouraged to then stop play during those critical moments to point out some maybe really positive thing that just happened, kind of do a rewind and say, when this ball moved here, you know, we were doing a really great job of shifting as a team and then defending um, near our goal. But we also uh, take those opportunities to make corrections uh, as a team to say that, you know, this is an area where if, if this player shifts this way a little bit more, we may be able to cover that passing lane a little bit better, something along those lines. So we, we mix in those uh, technical skills through the gameplay, but also some of those tactical things that will help make them better players in the future. So a lot of times I get questions about what is included with your academy registration fees. So when you go to register, um, uh, fees are certainly higher within an academy than they would be for a recreational program, but what are you getting for your money? Is there value in that? So on and so forth. Uh, so just kind of a laundry list of things that we have to, to offer our academy players. Two training sessions per week. Uh, we are also opening up an opportunity for some open play a third day each week where players will have the opportunity to um, meet at, um, potentially we're looking at the indoor facility to play some small sided games uh, if they're looking to just get out and play a little bit more that week. So we want um, some focused training sessions, but then a third day each week for players that are available within their age group to come out and just play a little bit. Uh, each player is provided a home and away uh, uniform. You probably see them over my shoulder a little bit here. We do get, have a, a black and a blue uniform um, provided um, by Nike along with a pair of shorts and a pair of socks. Uh, each player will have to provide their own soccer shoes and shin guards um, and water bottles and soccer balls and things like that. But overall costs to you outside of that um, uniform, shorts and socks should be relatively limited. We do provide quality instruction from our licensed coaching staff. Um, each staff member is trained um, through uh, our um, Wisconsin Youth Soccer Association and some national programs as well. And uh, we encourage our coaching staff to continue their education to continue to grow their skill set. Uh, we also are uh, having opportunities where our select staff will be available during some of our training sessions. They will come and work with our uh, academy players to help to bridge that gap, having them get to know the select coaching staff a little bit more, but also have them show, especially at that U10 level, kind of what does it take to uh, be ready to go into U11 select the following year. Uh, I did put a couple of stars next to this next one. On Friday nights, we do have a, kind of our makeup nights when training sessions are canceled due to the weather. Um, there not a lot of soccer programs um, have this kind of opportunity. Our goal is to not miss many um, training sessions. I, I know that you know other other programs that don't have an indoor facility like we do uh, will just cancel a training session, and then there is not necessarily a makeup for it. Um, our select a training or our select trainings when they get canceled, they can sometimes go immediately into the indoor facility that night. Uh, but we leave Friday nights open so that if a training session on a Tuesday is canceled for the academy, we can make up that night on Friday night as the indoor facility is reserved for our academy program. We also have some wonderful opportunities within our um, select program, boys and girls sides of some mentorship programs and leadership opportunities. So our older um, players within the select program will come to some of our training sessions, work with our players, um, over the winter, we had uh, several opportunities where some of our select players came in, worked with our academy players to help build their skill set. And it's just kind of it's kind of neat to see that uh, interaction when the, the, the young kids look up to those older select kids and say, I want to be like that someday. So there's some really cool opportunities that we provide that way. 
Uh, when it comes to games, we do have what are called six to seven play dates uh, in the fall and another six to seven play dates in the spring season. Uh, play dates are where our entire uh, Strike FC Academy will travel together. Uh, we will go to, let's say, Bavarians on a particular Saturday, and all of our teams will play um, throughout that day at the same location. Uh, we also will then host three to four of those uh, play dates as well at our Ewald Soccer Park out in Oconomowoc, where another club like North Shore United would bring all of their academy teams and play against our academy teams. And the uh, academy directors for each club will schedule out those games to have the best fits so that there aren't too many games going on at the same time. Um, but our coaching staff and players have the ability to play uh, at least one game during a play date. Sometimes they have the opportunity to play a second game if um, needs uh, allow or are, are needed for that. There are also two tournaments that our academy teams play in in the fall, and typically one tournament in the spring, although we have um, looked at the opportunity to add another spring tournament if um, time allowed, that would potentially cost an extra fee because we'd be looking at traveling to a, another uh, tournament. So that could be on a team by team basis as, as uh, requested. We also have these things called mega dates. This is where uh, up to 150 teams from all over kind of Southeast Wisconsin come together uh, and just play games. Uh, we hosted uh, the uh, mega date for the fall last fall at Ewald Soccer Park. It was a wonderful experience for all the teams and it kind of served as a, as a way to kind of get hit the ground running and get playing some soccer uh, in the early fall. Uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, safer at home guidelines, we did not have the opportunity to have our spring season, um, but we were going to be heading to Eline Soccer Park for the spring mega day this year. We also have uh, included in your registration fees, winter futsal opportunities at our indoor facility. Uh, not everybody signs up for it. It is on a, if you are available basis, uh, but we did have very good participation this past winter. We offered two sessions um, for people that had maybe some other conflicts. And when you added up how many games they played on Friday nights over the course of the winter in those two sessions, it did add up to 11 to 12 games, depending upon a couple of, of factors that were going on. So it's a really good opportunity to get in, keep playing over the winter and uh, having that all be included in your registration fees. Some repeat, repeated information here in terms of our 2000, 2021 uh, Strike FC Academy season calendar. We are looking at um, opening up some uh, kind of open house opportunities in early July, so you might look for that. But we are gonna be planning some Academy evaluations for players that have not been a part of our academy in the past during the weeks of July 27th and August 3rd. This is so that we can get players kind of placed on a proper skill set team. So if there are three teams at the U9 level, um, we do try to get them playing with players of similar skill set so that when we go to play dates, um, some of our uh, more experienced players, more skilled players are playing against some of the more skilled players from the other club, and it's a good competitive game. And then if we have a, a group of players that are more in the learning stages, um, they would play against a, a team from another club that is also in those learning stages and maybe not as experienced. Um, and I've found that that, that uh, allows for some really good competitive learning opportunities on those game days. And you don't have those real lopsided games very often where um, uh, one team is dejected because they're, they're not scoring many goals and losing by a lot. So we try to avoid that as much as possible. So our evaluations help us to kind of place players um, at least at the beginning of the year at a good starting point. We're looking at uh, having training sessions start the week of August 10th, and then we will kind of assign what team they're going to be on for games. Uh, our first games are planned even with the COVID-19 um, protocol. We are looking at returning to play, hopefully, by the end of August, uh, if modified, we'll, we'll make it work. But we have the Great Lakes Fall Cup, August 21st to the 23rd, where each team would play three to four games out at Ewell Soccer, Soccer Park. I mentioned the six to seven play dates in September and October. 
uh, the fall mega date. Uh, I have not seen the date for that yet, but we are expected to host that again. Usually that's about the second weekend in September. Uh, we end kind of the fall season with the kicker treat soccer fest out at UL Soccer Park where our academy teams can get another three to four games. That's uh, October 23rd through 25th. We, as I mentioned, have the Winter Academy Futsal Leagues that we run on Friday nights. That runs early December into early March. Uh, we do, I want to mention, have optional baseline training. Uh, we had, I would say, almost 80% of our academy players participated in this. And I know some of our, our rec players uh, also participated in this and, and were very impressed with the uh, baseline training running December through March to really focus on those foot skills and individual skills. That does come with an additional fee, but it's a great opportunity that we provide for our, um, our players in our academy, rec, and select programs. Uh, we do try to have over the winter months um, player and parent meetings based on the fall player evaluations. So with you sit down with the coach, uh, parents and players kind of get some feedback, set some goals for the spring season, and um, really have some good, open, honest conversations. When we come into the spring season, we're looking at another six to seven play dates against other clubs during April and May. We, in late May, have what's called the Valentine Cup with another three to four games out at Ewald Soccer Park. And then um, we were expected to have our spring mega date, like I mentioned, out at Eline Soccer Park with another two games per team. Um, and it was planned for the second weekend in June this past year. I'm expecting that to be the same plan going into this next season as well. Uh, those evaluations that I mentioned, uh, we do want each player that is going to come into the Strike FC Academy to attend at least one, but you certainly could attend more um, evaluation sessions prior to those team placements in mid-August. Uh, what we're kind of planning, and more details will be coming out very soon, uh, the week of July 27th and or the week of July, or sorry, August 3rd, um, players will need to register for a specific evaluation date and time. Players will complete an evaluation form prior to attending this so that we kind of have some contact information for you. Um, players will put their last name on the back of their shirt using a piece of tape uh, when they're attending the evaluations so we know you know, who we are evaluating at any given time. But the details of that exact evaluation protocol are gonna be shared in the future only because we are right now in kind of that phase one, nine players to one coach ratio using the US soccer play on protocol. And we are hoping that by the end of July, early August, that we might be into the um, phase two of this protocol where we could um, not just be in uh, our, our six foot social distancing spaces, but we might actually be able to um, evaluate players using some small-sided games. Uh, and we are hopeful that we'll be into some of those protocols by the time um, the end of July gets here. A couple of pictures uh, that we have, you know, just to kind of showcase what we do, how we do it. Uh, up in the upper left-hand corner, we have a coach at our indoor facility in one of our turf spaces uh, working on some foot skills. In the middle, we have some of the boys that were uh, out with us one of the evenings working on our mentorship program. In the upper right-hand corner, we have a coach at halftime with one of our U10 teams, um, you know, talking about you know strategy and what needs to change for the second half. In the lower left-hand corner, we've got a coach, a set of coaches working with our U9 girls team out at the mega date, um, talking to them about what needs to you know change between games. Uh, lower right hand corner, we also have some of our coaches on our futsal courts in our indoor facility showing you kind of what kind of space we have. That's half of a field in our indoor facility, and we do have two full futsal courts in our indoor facility to use. Again, a couple of uh, pictures in the middle. A lot of the girls that came out with our mentorship program on the girls' side uh, working in the upper left hand corner with them on a, a little bit of training. Uh, in the upper right hand corner, this was uh, one of the nights that uh, there was a nice full moon in the background and we, uh, we, we were training on a Friday night because the weather earlier in the week was, was not in our favor. So we had a nice group of girls come in and train on Friday night. And down at the bottom, you see a couple more pictures of some players, um, you know, resting, but getting instruction from a coach uh, during uh, a break 
in between games or at halftime. I do hope that you have found uh, some of the stuff that I've shared with you here today uh, of benefit to you. Please feel free to forward this on to anybody you think uh, wants to learn a little bit more about our uh, Strike FC Academy. I am uh, open to answering questions. One of the things I pride myself on is um, communication and getting back to people within 24 hours whenever possible. So please contact me, Kevin Martin, Strike FC Academy Director. You can see my uh, email address there at the bottom. I will try to get you some other contact information as needed uh, as well. I considered having some Zoom uh, question and answer sessions. I think I'll gauge kind of how this first first message goes out and see if we need to have some specific uh, live Zoom question and answer sessions if there's enough, enough feedback that I'm getting on that. So uh, thanks again and uh, really hope to see you on a Strike FC Academy field in the near future.